But I'm so excited. Visual Studio Code. Um, it's something that um, you've been working on and uh, together with our friend Yosas and some other team members in the company. And we're continuing to develop it. So um, every time we've talked to people in the community, they're very excited. So this is a alpha pre-release in the marketplace. So we ask everybody, please try it out. Give us feedback. Um, and we will continue to develop it uh, and do a big launch at some point um, when we feel like it's uh, more polished. But um, we feel like it's pretty good. And Kingdon, I will hand it over to you. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Same screen as before, only different this time. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today at GitOps, uh, GitOps Days. I'm really excited uh, to give this demo that we've been working on for quite a while. I'm just going to borrow these over here and put this into full screen. Great, okay. So this will be the GitOps VS Code extension for Flux beta marketplace release demo. Uh, the good news for today is uh, we're actually in the marketplace, as you'll see soon. So uh, my name is Kingdon, and I'm a Flux maintainer, and I've been working on this extension um, with lots of folks from Weaveworks and some folks from outside. Here's our agenda for today, uh, what we're going to cover. And we're going to start with the VS Code and Flux um, with the use of the extension. What does it look like? What are the core features? Um, we'll have a very, very brief talk about GitOps itself and the architecture of Flux. And we're going to show how we install this extension. Um, how do we install Flux? We'll talk a little bit about and uh, just sort of show what the experience is like and then maybe get into a deeper dive if we have enough time. So what does the VS Code Flux extension actually look like? This is, uh, this is in a nutshell, the user interface. We have this tab here that's added to the VS Code extension. You see this is also the Kubernetes extension that we depend on. So a lot of the functionalities in common, if you're familiar with the Kubernetes extension, ours is very closely related to that one. And we have these uh, tree views, which include uh, any clusters that you have in your cube config uh, sources. These are your Git repositories and your Helm repositories and your S3 buckets and now your OCIs um, and uh, workloads, which are Flux workloads that get applied to the cluster. So let's have a quick demo before we do any more talk. And uh, as you saw, I already have a cluster going here. This cluster is doing double duty today, back to back demos. So. Uh, I apologize if anything goes wrong. Uh, if you've seen my demos before, you know that nothing ever goes wrong. So here is our cluster repository with lots of stuff in it. Uh, I, I should have mentioned that we're starting with a cluster that has some things in it already. Um, and we can tell that it has some things in it uh, because if we mouse around in the Kubernetes plugin, we'll see them. Um, and let's go to the extensions page. We're going to type in GitOps. And here's our new extension in the marketplace. So let's install it. Ooh, look at that, it's already got five downloads. So let's uh, make the window a little bigger so we can see what's going on. And we'll zoom in some more. All right, so here you can see the interface that we just talked about. Here you can see my workloads from the demo that we just gave. We are going to do a little quick Flux uninstall uh, since I have some more interesting workloads here. They're not that much more interesting, but we're going to um, just quick show a little bit of the experience. Um, so Flux uninstall. This is a relatively safe command that you can run on a cluster that you don't care too much about uh, because it will uninstall all of your Flux workloads, uh, but the applications behind them will remain in place. So if we refresh now, we'll see those things are gone. 
And if we refresh up here, that will refresh these as well. We have this enable GitOps option that we can click here. Uh, so this is very inviting. It looks great. I recommend you click on it if you're brand new to GitOps. This is a great place to start. Uh, we will have some more advanced documentation here, by the way. This um, maybe more more beginner documentation is really what I mean to say. Um, uh, we're, we're going to come back and um, we wanted to get this into the marketplace because it's, it's going to be a lot more fun if we have people to iterate with. And uh, we, we'd love to hear your reports if you find issues with this. Uh, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to um, just apply some flux workloads to this cluster. So in my clusters list, I have this cluster. Uh, it is a kind cluster that's running on Equinix Metal. And we have the flux system folder here, um, which it looks like is empty. So we're going to bootstrap. Hopefully I have the command for this bootstrap. Looks like I might be missing that one. All right, we're going to we're going to do it live. Flex bootstrap uh, git hub. We've got an interval owner personal and this one is called Tail scale Kates on the branch main and our cluster is Equinix ARM64. I will need that personal access token one more time. Oops. So we're bootstrapping here because we want to connect to an existing repository. Uh, we would like to make it easier to connect to an existing repository through the user interface. This is on our roadmap for the future. So now I'm going to refresh and see how that turned out. Looks like our source is all synced. And we have some things that look like they might have failed. Ah, actually, this is another bug that we're working on. We'd like for these things to not show up as failures. Um, they're, they're progressing. They're not ready yet. So uh, according to the logic that we built in here, they are failing. Uh, but if we refresh, we'll see that fewer of them hopefully are failing now. And in a moment, even fewer until they're all fine. So great. So we can follow these things to see uh, how they're doing with... Um, the interface here, we can use the Flux CLI uh, like, like we would if we didn't have access to this, or we can just lean on this UI. Uh, I'm going to prefer that because that's what we're here to demo. And um, we're going to make a change to pod info here. Uh, so the rest of these things, I see there's one thing missing that we'll need to add. I have a secret uh, so that I can decrypt secrets. Okay, so we're going to let that apply. We've got our GPG secret, and then we're going to reconcile this resource. So I just right-clicked on that. I'm reconciling. We'll get some feedback here in the interface, in the output pane, and we see that that worked. All right, so we're ready to start with the rest of our demo. Here's our cluster definition. got a few things in it. I'm using uh, VPN to connect to this cluster. Uh, since it's bigger than my laptop, I didn't want to run this locally while I was trying to do video production stuff. So it's on a remote uh, machine running kind. And in the Flux system namespace, here's Flux. Uh, here's Prometheus that we've installed. Uh, that's from the Flux monitoring demo. Just so that this is a little bit populated, we can see there's more than one thing in here and how it's like to work with these. So we're going to go back to uh, our source here. We're going to find pod info. Here's pod info. At least one pod info. Okay, so this is our base. 
We've also got a uh, worker configuration that points to that base. And where is our pod info itself? Well, I'm pretty sure it's in here somewhere. I apologize, I've lost track of it momentarily. Here's our worker config points at apps. I bet it's in, uh, we're in the apps directory. Apps worker. So we'd like to make this easier to navigate. Uh, that is one issue here that I can see, that you can see, uh, is that the indirection layers in Flux do make it a little bit difficult to find uh, when you use them. So, all right, so I think what we're actually going to see is, ah, okay, so we've pointed at a Helm repository for this, and we have a Helm release. This is our definition. And I believe we have a patch defined somewhere. That's what I've lost track of here. All right, I'm going to grep. We're going to find it. Not in this directory. Hmm. Oh, I'm struggling. It's been a long day here. I'm trying to find the file, and it is not uh, showing up for me here. I thought it was in here. All right, well, we've seen a little bit of what's going on. I'd really like to push a change and get it uh, reconciled. We're going to uh, have to improvise, I think. Oops. Let's open it in the editor, huh? Yeah, okay. So we've got our source. We've got our Helm release. We're going to add some values to it, just like we did uh, a moment ago. Um, Here we go, some values. Get those invented, indented to the right tab level. That looks right. And we're gonna commit and push that. That's an interesting error. Uh, did I mention I'm also a maintainer for Flux V1? That's what this is from. All right, we're gonna sync this change and this time it's gonna work. All right, yep, that tag was in the way. We got rid of it. Okay, so we should be able to see something happening now, unless we weren't fast enough. We do see a reconciliation in progress here. Reconciliation succeeded for our pod info. All right, so we should be able to find the pod info service now. This one, all right, great. We're gonna push a change. We're going to make it green this time. Ooh. 
Live demo always gets the blood pumping. Is it going to work? Don't know. Okay, we pushed our change. We're going to go over to pot info. We're going to cross our fingers. Start to get a little impatient. See if we can see what's happening. Ah, pot info. Oh, there we go. It worked. Super. Hooray. All right, we're going to go back to the slides now. Uh, I think we probably ran a little bit over there. Uh, how are we doing on time? Okay, so uh, these were, uh, at a glance, the sort of goals. Um, we wanted to make sure there was a nice interface that you can use uh, and surface information when things break. Um, we certainly have some uh, room to move ahead, uh, but we'd like to help people take advantage of the advanced features of VS Code and refrain from as many context switches as we can avoid, those that uh, cause, cause us so much grief um, and uh, we are short on time, so I'm, I'm going to skip the GitOps principles. Uh, but as you can see, we've pulled these changes automatically into the cluster, and they're continuously reconciled. And I hope that you will try out the new GitOps extension uh, when you get a chance. OK. Thank you so much, Kingdon, and for risking always the live demo. <laughs> yeah, the live demo. Oh, <laughs> we, they're we always so stressful. Yes, <laughs> yes.